The final step of meditation is the result, the goal, samadhi, the experience of reality. Our aim is to awaken and liberate our consciousness. At this moment, we are perceiving with our consciousness as it inhabits our body, mind, heart, and personality. Each of these filters our perceptions. The steps of meditation remove the filters. Our body is a vessel filled with water. Our mind is also a vessel filled with water. If every day we are dumping impurities into the water, it will become so dark that we cannot see through it. This is why we cannot see reality and we cannot see in meditation. The steps of meditation are how we change this. In step one, we stop putting dirty things into our waters. Ahimsa is to do no harm to ourselves or to others, physically, mentally, emotionally. Ahimsa is compassion, selfless love. Ahimsa requires restraint of self-love, selfishness, ego. By restraining our selfish attitude, we can then allow our true nature to begin to express itself, which is altruism, generosity, kindness. The second restraint is satyam, truthfulness. We must never lie, neither to ourselves nor to others. This includes lying in our thoughts, feelings, and impulses. Our mind is a very skillful liar. We must learn to question what we think and feel. Asteya is to not steal. We must never take anything that is not rightfully ours. This is not just about material things. We also steal attention, energy, ideas, time, opportunities. Brahmacharya is to restrain lust and have sexual purity, chastity. We must become totally clean of lust in every level of our mind, heart, and body. This is not abstinence, it is sexual purity. Aparigraha is to restrain desires of all kinds. This is renunciation, freedom from desire. We desire attention, possessions, friends, fame, wealth, beauty. This is why we are unhappy, discontented, always envious and resentful because we want things we do not have. Someone who is ruled by their desires, who lies to themselves and others, who is always taking and taking, afflicted with lust and desire, cannot experience meditation and certainly cannot experience samadhi. If we want to experience the pure levels of nature, we then must be pure. Our ethics must become perfect, just as divinity is perfect. A crack, the width of a hair, can eventually cause a building to collapse. The same is true of our ethics. We must not allow even the slightest breach of our ethics. And when we find one, we must repair it immediately. Every spiritual advancement, every meditation skill is grounded on perfect ethics. In step two, we ensure that in each moment we act with purity, uprightness, consciousness, Saucha is to have purity. In each moment, we should strive for purity, cleanliness, true beauty, which is within. Santosha is to be content with simplicity and humility, to accept what we have and to take full advantage of it. Tapas is to accept difficulties without complaint, and to use each experience as an opportunity to serve others, 
to pay karma and to develop more patience. Svadhyaya is to consciously comprehend, to live and act intuitively. In this way of living, our intellect, emotion, and personality are passive, and our consciousness is active. Ishvara Pranidhana is to always be aware of the presence of divinity. This is not thought, but an expansive prayerful awareness that is always reaching out to divinity and listening for divinity. If you are unable to meditate, it is because you have not yet established these first two steps in your daily life. When they are firmly established in your daily life, Meditation happens easily, effortlessly. Those who are living by the first two steps experience more contentment, peace, and understanding. Thus, they are able to relax. Relaxation brings perfect stillness of the body. When we sit for meditation, our vessel must be placed in its posture and left completely alone, without any movement whatsoever. In this way, even though we still have impurities, they can settle and the waters become temporarily clear. Through pranayama, we harness our preserved sexual power and establish stillness of breath and energy. Stillness must become complete even in subtle levels. We aim for total stillness and silence on all levels. Then we withdraw our attention from the external senses. With our external senses still and silent, we do not need to pay attention to them at all. We focus inwardly, 100%. We concentrate on one object. We are not distracted at all and can maintain attention on one thing for as long as we want without ever forgetting what we're doing. Our concentration is 100% inward, focused on one thing without an instant of self-forgetting. Perfectly still, perfectly concentrated, we visualize what we want to understand now we engage the consciousness in its full power. When we visualize an event or scene, we are projecting an image in our imagination. We concentrate on it and wait. There is no thought, no comparing, no speculation. The mind, the intellect, is silent. The emotions are silent. The body is silent. Everything is motionless except the projection of that image. Eventually, a new image is reflected on the waters. We receive a new image, a new scene. We hear sounds. We see images that we are not projecting, but receiving. We must continue to maintain that perfect stillness, to concentrate and observe undistracted, impartial, relaxed. If we react at all, even slightly, the reception of the new images is lost. If we move or think or react emotionally, the waters are disturbed and the new images are lost. We can even lose the memory of what we were seeing. If we remain impartial and observant, the new images will continue and bring new information. Usually, we do not understand what we see. The images seem unrelated, strange, hard to explain. The intellect will want to speculate. The emotions will want to react with feelings like excitement or fear. These reactions will immediately end the experience. When the mind is silent and serene, understanding can emerge intuitively. 
Intuition is a conscious perception. It does not reason or compare. It knows. Intuitive insight occurs in a flash, instantly, and brings with it serenity, understanding, wisdom. Intuition is a power of the consciousness. It can see and understand what the senses and the intellect cannot. These steps are not broad plateaus that one must slowly traverse. We can experience them all in a quick moment without a clear boundary between them. They are related to the entrance into samadhi, which occurs in the same way on the same foundations. Stillness, serenity, awareness. If the intellect, heart, body, or personality become active, the doorway retreats. In this equation, in this experience, we learn how to enter samadhi at will. When receiving new internal images, if our consciousness is in exactly the right condition, unbound by any filter or reaction, it can escape the vessel completely. It goes out of the intellect, out of the body, and is free. It experiences ecstasy. This is the bliss of paradise, the bliss experienced by all the saints. It is true freedom. Samael Anvior said, Ecstasy, Samadhi, is not a nebulous state, but a transcendental state of wonderment, which is associated with perfect mental clarity. On one given night, while in profound internal meditation, I abandoned this illusory world of Maya, thus liberated from the shackles of this bitter existence. I submerged myself into Samadhi within the world of the spirit. There is no better pleasure than feeling oneself as a soul detached from the body, the affections, and the mind. Samadhi is not a physical sensation. Some mistakenly believe it is like an intense orgasm, but that is wrong. Samadhi has nothing to do with physical sensations. Samadhi is a state of consciousness, characterized by clarity of perception and the absence of the ego. Samadhi is the state of consciousness sought by all genuine schools of meditation. In the state of Samadhi, we experience reality. There are many levels to reality, and so there are many levels of Samadhi. Samadhi is the consciousness in its natural state. It is totally unconditioned. In that state, it perceives clearly, since there are no conditions that filter its perception. That is the value of Samadhi. In that state, one sees the truth, the reality. It is the only way to see reality with certainty. In the state of Samadhi, the consciousness is totally unfiltered and can see and understand the truth. When we need to understand a problem, in Samadhi we can see everything about that problem and how to solve it. Samael Anvior said, Supreme meditation and absolute adoration take us into ecstasy, Samadhi. Any master of Samadhi is an illuminated one. Nonetheless, we must know that illumination is one thing and self-realization is another very distinct matter. A master of samadhi, ecstasy, can unbottle the soul from the mind that is normally bottled up within the eye. But this does not signify the incarnation of the truth. After the ecstasy, the mind normally becomes bottled up within the eye and the mystic is left with his same tragic and painful life. Experiences in Samadhi are wonderful, but fleeting, and on their own do not fundamentally change our circumstances. We need to know about Samadhi 
and understand it. So we are prepared when it happens. But our focus should not be on chasing after spiritual experiences. Our main concern should be changing ourselves. Samael Ambior said, Those who pretend to reach the final liberation without having previously eliminated the multiple undesirable psychic elements that we carry within our interior walk on the path of error. Great hermits or anchorites were known to have lived in lonely caverns in the Orient. Due to the fortitude of multiple disciplines, they reached ecstasy, samadhi. However, they failed because they did not dissolve the ego. Those anchorites were accustomed to only momentarily taking the essence, the buddhi, out from the bottle. And then they experienced satori and samadhi. Yet after that mystic experience, they returned into the bottle like the genie in Aladdin's lamp. Some of these saints died in complete maha samadhi. Nevertheless, presently such beings have returned as vulgar, ordinary people. They were skilled in samadhi, yet they did not work on the ego. Thus, the result is failure. Samadhi is wonderful, but it is temporary. To reach real liberation, we need to use meditation and samadhi to eliminate our psychological defects. There are three stages to this elimination of defects. In our daily life, we must consciously observe our patterns of thought, emotion, and impulses. Impartial self-observation is how we gather information about ourselves. We then meditate daily on what we observed, visualizing the information we gathered. By retrospection of the entirety of our day, we gain a broad, objective view of ourselves and discover patterns and hidden sides we did not notice during the day. We then focus on the key event or events of the day, focusing on the defects that are most urgent to eliminate. This is not a process of thought or comparison, but with concentration and visualization, we project the images and wait to receive new information. This new information does not come from our intellect, conscious memory, or comparison with others or books we read. This new information comes from the internal worlds, from divinity, from the depths of our consciousness. It brings unexpected insights, forgotten events, and a point of view we never would have expected. By consciously observing this new information, our intuition brings genuine understanding of ourselves, our defects, mistakes, and oversights, and gives us the wisdom to change permanently. We know a defect is comprehended when it no longer has power over us. That which tempted us no longer does. That which caused us pain no longer does. That which drove us to behave poorly no longer does. This means that our consciousness is no longer trapped in them. They can now be destroyed. Those defects that have been understood can then be eliminated by appealing to our inner Divine Mother. This is as simple as asking her for help. As long as we are preserving and transmuting our sexual power, she can do it. The final steps of meditation can happen in an instant. You can experience moving from concentration to dhyana and samadhi and back again in just a moment. This is normal and to be expected. Do not imagine that one reaches a step, struggles there for a few months or years until reaching the next step, 
where one again struggles for months and years to get to the next step. It is not like that. You will find that as your state of consciousness wavers and changes continually, so too does your experience of meditation, until with experience and maturity it ripens into a steady and familiar rhythm that you know how to control. Do not worry about samadhi. Do not seek it. Focus on changing yourself. Samadhi will happen on its own when the conditions are right. To give you inspiration and strength in the work of meditation, we advise you to not only meditate on a defect, but also to meditate on the virtue that is trapped in it. If you're working to reduce your anger, then also meditate on love. After you visualize the facts of an event of anger, visualize also how different that event would have been if you had acted with love instead of anger. Visualize how virtues would change situations and their results. In this way, we become encouraged, inspired, and convinced of the importance of this work. Be patient. We have been creating our defects for centuries. They will not be eliminated overnight or even in a few years of work. They are dense, layered, and require a lot of patient investigation before they can be eliminated. Information acquired in Samadhi will of course be the clearest and most reliable. Since in Samadhi the consciousness is temporarily liberated from all conditioning factors, and thus its view is unfiltered, uninfluenced by any ego or personality or bias. And that is why Samadhi is our goal. However, Samadhi is not required in all cases. Some defects can be understood without Samadhi. Some defects require meditation for a few days, weeks, or months, and can then be eliminated. However, the worst, the densest, the most powerful defects that are carrying us to hell require very deep and prolonged investigation in meditation and do not easily yield their secrets. This is what is represented in all of our ancient myths of heroes descending into the underworld. It is a battle. The path to win it is long and difficult, and the outcome is never certain. However, the battle must be fought. For the alternative, to sink into hell as a failure, is simply not an option. Persistence is worth it. Little by little, day by day, your defects will lose power over you, and your virtues begin to emerge. Instead of discontentment, doubt, fear, and lust, you will begin to see these qualities in yourself. Purity, firmness and strength, fortitude, steadiness, lightness, realization, and detachment leading to liberation. Reality can only be understood through experience. Everyone who learns meditation wants to experience the reality of the superior worlds, to talk with masters and Buddhas, to walk in the paradises and heavens. These experiences are real and can be had, but few have them precisely because few are willing to change. In our current condition, we do not see reality. We do not see reality through our external senses in the world outside of us. Instead, those limited perceptions are filtered by the senses and our brain and filtered further by our personality, education, prejudices, opinions, and biases. We also do not see reality through our internal senses. Instead, everything we think, feel, and imagine is also heavily filtered and modified, especially to force it all to fit into our limited, preferred interpretations. Our perceptions 
are interpreted by our defects, vices, our ego. We believe that our interpretation is reality, but it is not. It is very far from reality. There are millions of theories and beliefs about reality, about truth. But since we do not see the reality of ourselves, we certainly cannot see the reality outside of us. And that is why the oracle at Delphi said, Know yourself, and you will know the universe and its gods. We do not see the universe and its gods because we do not know ourselves. The only way to approach samadhi and experience it is by knowing the facts of ourselves. And the only way to know the facts is to consciously perceive them so then we can consciously understand them.